Basically, what is known as the AI Bill of Rights is actually a blueprint for an AI Bill of Rights. So this was established by the White House to help guide the design and use of AI. It's a non-binding and non-enforceable, so it doesn't have any legislative protections as of yet as a blueprint. Specifically, the Bill of Rights applies to automated systems that have the potential to meaningfully impact people's rights and opportunities, and also their ability to access critical resources or services. So the Bill of Rights consists of a set of five principles, and with those five principles are a long list of associated practices, and these are meant to guide organizations through the effective development and implementation of AI systems with particular emphasis on unintended consequences of civil and human rights abuses. So the associated practices, as I said, that are tied into these principles, they provide a fairly comprehensive and detailed outlook on what is to be expected. And so none of the guidance, I'm gonna call the, the associated practices, they are kind of like guidance. I'm, I'm gonna say that it should not be particularly novel to anyone who's already familiar with working with or developing or deploying IoT devices. It, it does have a very similar tone. So we'll get into this. So under the safe and effective principle, there is a consultation element where you should be developing your system in consultation with diverse communities, stakeholders, and domain experts. There's also a risk assessment element. So this is where the system should undergo pre-deployment testing, risk identification and mitigation, and ongoing monitoring that demonstrates that the system is actually safe and effective. So this too is not novel. There's many jurisdictions that require a privacy impact assessment to be conducted for any high risk processing, including where new technologies are being used. So that kind of ties into there. To accompany this, there should also be an independent evaluation and confirmation that the system is safe and effective. And then these results of this reporting, this independent evaluation and confirmation should be made public whenever possible. You also have to design systems in a way that protects people from algorithmic discrimination, as Paul mentioned earlier. So protections should include proactive equity assessments as part of the system design. So this is where you'd want to do things like gate checks at each phase of the design to confirm that your algorithm in no way discriminates against a certain group of individuals. Uh, if your system is using data that is representative of a certain community of people, you want to continuously review this for bias and historical and social context. Um, and you should also be ensuring that there is no accessibility issues for people with disabilities. So that's all been baked right into the AI Bill of Rights. You also wanna make sure that your automated systems have built in privacy protections by default. So think of like data minimization uh, and using the data in a way that aligns with people's reasonable expectations. Collection, use and disclosure of personal information that's related to your automated decisions should be based on consent, which should, should be specific for narrow uses of the data and for specifically set timeframes. Systems should not be designed to remove or bypass user choice. Default settings should be privacy friendly. Again, we've seen this in IoT before. Any type of surveillance technologies should be subject to heightened oversight and should include at a minimum a pre-deployment assessment of potential harms. Individuals should also be able to access their personal information and their metadata about themselves and know who has access to their data. They should be able to correct it as well. And then there should be mechanisms in place to delete data and metadata when consent is withdrawn. With regard to transparency, uh, people should know that an automated system is being used and understand how outcomes and decisions impact them. We've seen this in recent FTC blogs. Information should be accessible and provided in plain language documentation with tailored explanations provided to specific audiences. So think of the type of audience you're trying to talk to, whether it's a developer or an end user, the general public, and basically you should be tailoring your explanation so that those audiences can understand it. Again, we see this in just general privacy where uh, the regulators want you to make sure that your privacy notices are tailored specifically to your audiences. And finally, organizations should have in place human alternatives. 
So what this means is that individuals should be able to opt out of automated systems in favor of a human alternative. So this is where they can have access to an actual person who can quickly intervene and a person who is trained to be able to complete the processing manually or remedy any problems with the automated system. The blueprint uh, also recommends that human intervention or human consideration be incorporated for any adverse or high-risk decisions. And they also recommend that um, timely human-driven processes already be in place when the automated system is deployed so that you're not deploying a system and then all of a sudden you have somebody who wants human intervention or there is a call for that and you're quickly trying to scramble and put some sort of human entity or person in place uh, in order to, to address that. It should be kind of in tandem at deployment. So those are just a few of the key takeaways from the blueprint. It is quite prescriptive and it's, I'm gonna call guidance, the associated practices, but those are like, that's the gist of it. So as you can gather from the tone, the intent appears to provide a somewhat prescriptive roadmap for the development and deployment of AI in the US um, that is not legislatively restrictive and that continues to promote and allow for innovative growth in AI. Where does the AI Bill of Rights fit in here? So as you can see, it's just one piece of a broader AI landscape forming. So to further inform organizations' AI activities, in January of this year, NIST published its AI Risk Management Framework. So this is a voluntary framework to help organizations incorporate trustworthiness into the design, development, use, and evaluation of their AI systems. It's very detailed. We have been studying it for quite some time since January, going through it, annotating it, things like that. It's it, it's a very great starting point for anyone who just needs a starting point in some direction. Also under the its AI and Algorithmic Fairness Initiative, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission continues to provide resources for employers that use AI and machine learning in their hiring practices and, and any of their uh, employment decisions. Uh, globally, we have the OECD AI principles. So this, um, these principles focus on values such as transparency and explainability, fairness and accountability, and this is to promote the use of AI in an innovative and trustworthy way. There's also the Global Partnership on AI, which currently consists of 29 global members. This includes the US, EU, UK, Australia, Japan, among others. So this initiative brings together multiple stakeholders from government, science, industry, and academia. And their goal is to essentially share research and facilitate international collaboration on AI, basically to bridge the gap between AI theory and the practice of AI. And then to date, we've tracked 60 plus countries that have in place a national AI strategy. So this is where we get a bit more legislative. So we have the EU AI Act. That's looming on the horizon. It's still currently in draft form. It's being discussed in, uh, by Parliament. Once this is passed, there's an expected two-year grace period to allow impacted companies to comply. So this act will classify different AI tools according to their perceived level of risk. So right now it's low, high, unacceptable. It will apply to anyone who provides a product or service that uses AI in the EU, including systems that generate an output such as any content, predictions, recommendations, or decisions. Um, so there's still discussions happening on how the act will impact general AI systems. So this would include generative AI models like ChatGPT um, and whether such systems will be designated as high risk. So from a privacy perspective, the EU AI Act will work in tandem with the GDPR. So any processing of personal data within these AI systems will still need to meet the requirements of the GDPR. And finally, the EDPB has opened a chat GPT task force meant to foster cooperation. And this will allow the exchange of information between data protection authorities on possible enforcement actions. So this was... I'm sure a lot of you have read the Italian DPA when they launched their investigation into chat GPT and then kind of like dominoes, we had the German DPA and also the Spanish AEPD kind of follow suit in that they were raising concerns and talking about starting their own investigations. So this is kind of what spawned this EDPB chat GPT task force. 